In today's video, I want to talk about a uh, union and how you can actually make use of it. So let's start simple. Let's start with a simple example. Um, first things first, I want to declare a 64 bit signed integer. So I have a long, long uh, that says, I don't know, num equals 17. And I just want to print it on the screen. So that should work, right? We get percent LLD backslash N. And if I say num here, we should actually get 17 nice and fancy but what i want is instead of printing just the number i want to print every single byte of that uh, 64 bit or 8 byte uh, integer well how to do that without uh casting because what well, we could actually just cast it into a char pointer and keep on adding to it but i don't really want to do any sort of casting i want it to be done automatically this is where unions can be useful. So if we say here union and our union's name, let's say example, I don't actually have any proper name for it. And open and close brackets, the same, the declaration structure is the same as a struct declaration. So we just have to add uh, members of that union between the open and close brackets, right? And what I want here is our long, long, so I want long, long, num and what I'm gonna add here is whatever represents uh, what's the structure of multiple bytes well we know that a character is just one byte so we can actually make use of it and we know that we can have an array of characters to make eight bytes so we can have here a um, a char let's say bytes of eight. So eight characters would would have the exact size of a 64 bit uh, signed integer, right? And similar to structs, you can actually type def them. I have actually made a video on why you should uh, use the type def and how it actually works. Uh, you can check up top, but uh, in this example, we're just gonna add the type def so we don't have to say union example okay so instead of our num here we are going to define our example variable so example let's say e and i'm gonna give the num equals 70 so so far so good it's sim it's very similar to our struct right we just have uh members of a union and if i try to print our number here and run this you'll notice i get 17 so that's the exact same result as before now, something peculiar is going to happen if I try to print on the screen and show you the values of the bytes array. So here I'm going to just create a for loop. So int i equals zero. So, okay, um, what I have here is a for loop and I am printing every single byte of this array, right? I'm going from zero to uh, seven. And this specifier just says print whatever is in there in as a one byte in hexadecimal right and only on two characters and also pad them with zeros if you only have one character for example so that's what this specifier is it looks a bit complicated but it's not trust me and then i just have a space here so if i try to run this you will notice that instead of just getting uh zeros across the board or just some garbage values I actually am getting the memory inside our 17. Due to NDNS, we are starting with the least significant byte, which is 11. And if we convert 11 from hexadecimal to a decimal, we are actually going to get 17 because uh, one times one is one and one times 16 is 16 and 16 plus one is 17. And the rest is zero. So what does that mean for our union? Very, very, very simple. Basically, inside a union, all the members share the exact same memory, right? They are, instead of uh, side by side, they are put on top of each other. So whenever we're changing one, we're actually going to be changing the other. So it's a very simple way of interpreting the same, the exact same uh, memory in different ways without actually uh, resorting to cast. So wait, wait to say, if I modify the num, I'm modifying the bytes, right? And if I'm modifying the bytes, I should modify the num. So that means that I can actually change this to something else. So if I instead 
of e dot num equals 17 i do e dot bytes of zero so the first byte of that array i change that to 17 i should get the exact same result and if i run this you'll notice that's exactly what happens right so those two are equivalent due to this being inside a union so unions can be used to interpret the same exact place in memory in different ways. So here I'm interpreting it as a 64 bit sign integer and as an array of characters, right? And I can add even more to, to this thing. So I can add, for example, I don't know, I can also add an array of two floats. Why not, right? And I can say array of two floats. That would be uh, still 64 bit and they would still share all the same memory. So if I, if I set this guy, all these two are going to be set as well to whatever values we're going to have in here. So that's, that's the way it's useful where you can use it is, for example, if you have multiple uh, variables that are set in a mutually exclusive way. So if one of them is set, you are never going to set the other, the other two, right? And you're not, never going to access the other two, right? Uh, if you happen to have such a sh scenario where you actually need three variables that are of different types, um, and they're mutually exclusive, you can use a union. All right. So I hope this was useful. This was a really short introduction to uh, the unions in C. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave the questions down in the comments below or on our Discord server and see you guys next time. Take care.